Famcast Media. Bitch. Something very horrific happened last weekend, and now I'm going to give you the full story and an update on it. The 17-year-old high school student charged in the stabbing death of 28-year-old O'Shea Sibley will be tried as an adult. Sibley had been dancing with friends at a Brooklyn gas station when police say they got into a confrontation with another group. CBS 2's Alice Gaynor was in court for the suspect's arraignment. 17-year-old Dmitry Popov entered the courtroom and looked at his family in the gallery as they waved. They said nothing after. Do you have any comment at all? Popov's attorney entered a not guilty plea on his behalf on charges that include second degree murder as a hate crime for the stabbing death of 28 year old O'Shea Sibley. He regrets what happens, certainly does, but it doesn't mean that he's guilty of a crime. On July 29th, Sibley was dancing with friends at a gas station in Midwood, Brooklyn. The NYPD says a group of teens got into an argument with Sibley and his friends and spewed homophobic slurs and anti black statements at them. Security camera video shows both groups walking away. Sibley then comes back to confront Popov, who was recording with his phone, allegedly continuing to say hateful remarks. Sibley is seen following the teen, then lunging at him. The Brooklyn DA says Popov allegedly reached into his pocket and pointed a knife at one of Sibley's friends, threatening to stab him. The stabbing happened out of view of the cameras, allegedly at the hands of Popov. The Brooklyn DA notes Sibley did not have a weapon. Defending yourself from being an anti-gay or an anti-black comment and arguing back is not a cause for someone to take a weapon and do what was done. Popov's attorney claims his client did not did hurl not. hate speech. And I suspect that other people did that were not arrested. He says they're looking into self-defense, but it's early. Criminal A-D- defense attorney David Schwartz, who is not involved in the case, explains what that would require. What the defense needs to show is that this um, act was justified and that the defendant reasonably believed that his life was in harm or he was in danger of physical harm. The defendant first had to try to retreat from the harm before invoking the self-defense. Rallies and vigils have been held in Sibley's honor in support of the LGBTQIA plus community. It robs not just the family, but an entire community of the sense of safety and security. On the hate crime count, if convicted, it's a minimum 20 years behind bars, the maximum 25 to life. Popov's next court date is October 10th. Outside of the courthouse in downtown Brooklyn, Alice Gaynor, CBS 2 News. Good evening, demons and demonesses. Demonesses, Kwame Wakan here. Now, this story was sent to me by a guy named Deshaun Stallings. Now, he sent to me and he said it was imperative that I talk about this. And, you know, being that there's been, you know, an update in the case, um, I had to make this a priority. Now, just last week, um, a man was stabbed outside of a petrol station. Um, Basically, he was filling up, you know, his uh, his car and you had a, you know, he was listening to Beyonce music, which is something that pretty much all of us do. You know, when you're filling up your car at the petrol station, you know, and there's a good song on you, you, you're going to turn the volume up while you're pumping gas. You know, it's something that that happens like naturally. I've known so many people have done it. I've done it myself when I've traveled to states where you had to pump your own gas. We're going to begin here with the tragic death of a man who danced his way into the hearts of so many in Philadelphia and beyond. O'Shea Sibley's killing in New York City is now being investigated as a possible hate crime. Sibley was stabbed to death over the weekend at a Brooklyn gas station, reportedly after a group started yelling homophobic slurs. Action News reporter Taronda Thomas has been covering this today. She's live now at Philodenko in Powelltown with more on the victim's deep ties to Philadelphia. Yes, Brian, you know, Sibley's dance dreams were playing out in New York City, but they started right here in Philadelphia, actually here at Philadanco. This is where he got his start. And the founder says black gay men who want to dance face a lot of hardship and hate. He was 14, busy body. And he just wanted to be a dancer. That was the first time O'Shea Sibley stepped into the Philadelphia Dance Company, or Philodenco. Coming from North Philly, you know, where the guys tease you for being a dancer, he persevered. 
As Philodanco's founder, Joan Myers Brown, recalls, Sibley excelled quickly. And then he got so he said, I'm ready to move on. And he did, all the way to New York City. Studying at the Alvin Ailey School. Tragically, Sibley was also dancing in some of the last moments of his life. The 28-year-old was voguing with friends at a Brooklyn gas station Saturday night when they say a group of people started yelling homophobic slurs. Friends say Sibley, seen in the light-colored shorts, was trying to stand up for them. I'm sure that night he probably would say, man, we just dancing. Surveillance video, now part of the police investigation, shows a confrontation in which Sibley is stabbed. His death being investigated as a possible hate crime in New York as the Philadelphia a district attorney's office sees a rise in crimes against the LGBTQ plus community. We live in a country that has sought to eradicate race um, and sexuality from our dialogues without eradicating racism and homophobia from our institutions. Sibley's death heartbreaking for his family with his aunt Tondra Sibley telling Action News quote it's a big hole in our family he was so much to everybody. Another message honoring Sibley from one of the biggest stars in the world Beyonce posting on her website rest in power O'Shea Sibley. New York police are looking for the person in the red shorts who they say is 17 years old. Myers Brown hopes her former student's tragic death sheds light. This is the world we live in now. While remembering his life. We won't forget it. We can't. New York police have not made any arrests in this case. Dancers from Philodanco will perform at Sibley's funeral service, which will be Tuesday at the Met. Philodanco has also started a GoFundMe to help his family. In Powelton, Taronda Thomas, Channel 6 Action News. Sarah? Such a senseless loss. Taronda, thank you. Tonight, a 17-year-old in New York is facing murder charges as well as hate crime charges after police say he stabbed a professional dancer at a Brooklyn gas station last week. Shelley Malashi has the very latest on this investigation. Parents lost a child, a child to something clearly that was a hate crime. New York Mayor Eric Adams joining the assistant chief of the NYPD in announcing charges against a Brooklyn high school student in the stabbing death of 28-year-old dancer O'Shea Sibley. This is a city where you are free to express yourself, and that expression should never end with any form of violence. Police charging a 17-year-old with murder as a hate crime and criminal possession of a weapon in the death of the gay black man last Saturday. Sibley was dancing to a Beyonce song with friends at a Brooklyn gas station when a group approached them and started to shout anti-gay slurs at them. His name was O'Shea. That's according to a friend who witnessed the incident. A dispute ensued between the two groups, and when it escalated, the suspect stabbed Sibley. Not in my hood! Not in my hood. has triggered an outpouring of grief and calls for justice. justice. Community members and anti-violence activists gathered at the gas station for a rally, honoring the promising young dancer on Friday. Anyone, any human that enjoys something and they lose their life over it, we should put an emphasis on it. Sibley, who had attended the Philadelphia Dance School, was preparing to audition for The Lion King when he was killed, according to the New York Times. I'm Shelley Malashi. And you can see there that Beyonce had honored him as well. Now, as you guys have heard, uh, one of the suspects that was arrested was a 17-year-old boy. So this guy wasn't even a, a grown adult. This was a little... Now, one of the things that, you know, the news reports in both these situations fail to you know mention is that the kid who attacked this man was a fundamentalist Muslim all right so here's a little interjection so after I got done editing this video there was another report that just came out apparently that's wrong he's not a fundamentalist Muslim um, he's not a Muslim at all actually um, his lawyer um, has identified him as quote a good Christian boy and says that there's a lot of you know misreports within the news articles and now I understand why you know the news uh, originally didn't report this as you know a, a Muslim story um, because you know there wasn't enough information as to what religion this boy was or anything like that apparently words were said that someone said oh, we're Muslim we don't uh, we don't believe in all that stuff that gay stuff um but apparently that didn't happen at all and since there's no audio on the surveillance camera we don't know what the hell was said 
But like I said, according to, you know, the lawyer and, you know, the suspect himself, they're both Christians, not Muslims. So I apologize about that. And, well, it's a good idea to always make sure that you double check your sources. Because some sources are willing to report one thing because of, you know, an agenda. So just take all of that with a grain of salt. All right, let me continue with the video. Now, if you guys have seen my previous coverages on, you know, cases like this, it's mostly, you know, you see Christian radicals, Christian fundamentalists and whatnot. Now you have an Islamic fundamentalist. So this guy was either some sort of Salafist or Wahhabist. I, I don't even freaking know. But it's a shame that this man had to lose his life over profound ignorance. And the profound ignorance that I'm talking about is the ignorance known as religion. You know, you see so many times people say, oh, well, being gay is wrong and being gay is harmful to children. But yet here you have a literal child that has his entire life thrown away because he had these ignorant religious beliefs shoved down his throat since he was probably a wee lad. You want to say drag shows inappropriate for kids. You want to say, you know, gay people dancing is inappropriate for kids. You want to say that hormones and puberty blockers are inappropriate for kids. But in my honest opinion, there's nothing more inappropriate for children than religion. You know, there's an old saying, um... Shao, you're like tearing up my studio. Baby girl, you're tearing everything up. I think about it, you're 17 years old, you ha you barely even got to experience life, you're like, in your lot, what is it, you're just graduating high school, maybe going through your senior year, and you went from that to now stabbing someone and now facing murder charges, and being that he's so close to adulthood, he's only going to be in juvie for like maybe a couple months and then transferred over to an adult prison, where he'll be, he'll be spending, where he'll be, you know, serving the rest of his sentence. And my thing about this is this, you know, being like this 17 year old kid. Another question I want to ask is, where were this kid's parents? Why were the parents involved? Why was he running around with a knife anyway? I mean, look, I understand crime is high in, you know, New York. But apparently this kid wasn't raised right if he thought it was okay to just pull out a knife and stab someone for being gay. I mean, I could understand if he didn't like, look, I get it. I don't like listening to Beyonce music either, but you know, all he had to do was walk over to the car and say, hey, could you please turn the music down a little bit? And I, gar and I guarantee it probably would have happened. But you know, people always want to take everything up to and crank it up to level 100. You know, this is sort of like the whole situation down in Florida with uh, the Michael Dunn case. I think that's his name where he shot Jordan Davis because he didn't like the fact that they were listening to loud music at the petrol station. And to be honest, I don't really think that this will be the last time we hear about something like this. And you know, to be fair to you, everybody here, cases like this are relatively rare, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, radical Islam. As you guys can see from my video history, most of the things that I talk about is like radical Christians going after, you know, gay people and trans people. You know, 28 years old, he literally is about to get, you know, a, a spot dancing for Broadway's Lion King. And then this happens. But um, one of the things I also want to bring up is, you know, props to Beyonce. I know I'm not really a big fan of hers, but props to her for, you know, honoring this lad in his death. Um, apparently, um, Beyonce had a concert. And um, after finding out about this story, she posted his name on like the, the widescreen at one of the concerts that's pretty much all i have to say about this um guy is currently in custody right now um hopefully you know justice will be served and i'll and i'll just keep you guys updated on whatever else happens uh with charges and sentencing and whatnot all right you guys stay safe stay metal hell satan and i'll catch you guys in the next one